This podcast is sponsored by Release Winery. Join us as the story of this ultra-limited wine continues. Learn more at releasewinery.com. Good to see you in my office, or good to have you out here in Sonoma County. Yeah, six weeks between Chile and Argentina, but it's it's a something that I got lucky with. You know, I was 28 years old, it was 1992, and I was a winemaker at Simi Winery, and Simi at the time was owned by Louis Vuitton, and they owned a number of still wines around the world, Cloudy Bay, Cape Mantel, Rufino in Italy, Terrasas in Argentina, Roses in Portugal, etc. And so they sent me out on sort of a blending mission around the world and meeting very famous winemakers and great brands. And I sort of carried that mantra through with me as we got purchased by Constellation. And then later on in my life, I left and went to Allo de Mac and Jim Beam. And they had the same thing. In fact, Allo de Mac had 58 wineries around the world. And so I got to live on an airplane for seven years. But man, the contacts I've made and the... You know, I learned so much about so many different places and met so many great people and learned really the true meaning of Tarawara is largely influenced by the culture and the personalities of the people as well, not just the soil and the environment that wines are made in. And so I sort of carried that with me around as I consult around the world. And today I still work in six countries. But, you know, if I ever get asked a tough question, Ray, I can always just pick up the phone and call one of my old friends from Spain or Portugal or wherever. I'm always one phone call away from the answer, you know, so that's been great. They've become really close friends, exactly. And I've, I tell each winemaker that I work with or viticulturalist that I work with that, you know, you and I may not work together our, for the rest of our lives, but... I'm going to have, I know exactly where you live, and when I retire, I'm going to come hang with you, I'm going to drink your wine, hang out with your kids, hang out with your wife or your husband, and uh, have a good time. But Because that's really what life's, what the wine industry is all about, is um, the passion of the people, and, you know, wine people are, and vineyard people are, tend to be the sort of people I hang out with anyway. Yeah, I left. it was interesting times back then. My first vintage was 1982, believe it or not. Wow. And uh, yes, I was in New Zealand. I have two degrees from New Zealand, but there wasn't any wine school back then. So I was in agriculture. I was doing, well, horticulture. I always wanted to be a row cropper, garlic, carrots, onions. And really? then I discovered uh, grapes. They had a, a few vines on this research plant plantation where I was. And uh, so I ended up going to Wagga Wagga in Australia, which is the big... Vit Enology School. They built right between the between halfway between the Yarra Valley and the Hunter Valley, which are two famous Appalachians in Australia. And they built a wine school there. So I did viticulture there, and then after that, I did a postgraduate in Enology at Roseworthy in Gawler, which is closer to Adelaide. And then I returned to New Zealand for a couple of years, and then uh, headed off to California. My first vintage in California was 1989. Went back to Chile and Argentina was in France, got a phone call, ended up at Simi for the vintage of 1990. And uh, I've stayed in this town ever since. So 32 years now in beautiful, beautiful Healdsburg. You know, we're one hour from the Golden Gate Bridge. We're in the heart. We've got four Appalachians, Russian River, Chalk Hill, Alexander Valley and, and uh, Dry Creek all meet in Healdsburg. Huge wine community. And, um, you know, it's just a fab- fabulous place to visit, fabulous place to live, Yeah. Well, it's where my family lives, you know, and uh, we own a number of properties here in Sonoma County. So my main focus is obviously Alexander Valley Cabernet, which I've been making since 1990 at Simi, of course, Uh, and Russian River Chardonnay, which, of course, Simi was known for for a number of years before they came more well known for Cabernet. And then the other big passion for me is Oakville. And so I make a number of wines from Oakville, and the reason, I mean, you may argue that Rutherford is perhaps a little bit more famous appellation, but I find the tannins in Rutherford, you know, they talk about the Rutherford dust, and sure enough, I, the tannins for me are a little bit more grippy. I mean, great wines, but they tend to be a little bit more grippy, whereas Oakville for me is more similar to Alexander Valley in terms of the silkiness. And we can pick the grapes a little bit lower in alcohol and still end up with this really fine grain tannin. You know, we often talk about, you know, obviously I make wine in New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, I still do that, under Boulder Bank and Forefathers. And what I look for is like, when you drink that wine, you get, you know, 
Yeah. Am I hungry or thirsty? And you get that tension, you know, you get that line and just explodes in the mouth. And I find that you can get that also with Cabernet if you get the acidity correct. So in the Alexander Valley, if you're looking for the difference but for me between Alexander Valley and Oakville, Alexander Valley tends to be a little bit more red fruit. So you get, you know, high in red fruit is strawberry and raspberry, but we tend to be more um, red cherry, blueberry, a little bit of black cherry. With Oakville, we tend to start at blueberry, black cherry, and then we go down from there. So, But the acidity tends to be the same. We tend to get a little bit brighter acidity. And acidity, we don't really talk about when we describe wines because people get put off by what that means. But it's important for longevity. And as wines age, you need that support structure for the wine to remain in that fruity element. And if you have too high in alcohol, too much residual sugar, it moves away and you lose that tension of the wine. But with a little bit more acidity, it stays brighter and younger and more youthful. And so that's what we look for. Yes and no, but it's very tricky. <laughs> so we talk about site-specific winemaking and here in the Alexander Valley, I know it sounds weird, I, I use more hillside fruit than I do in Oakville. So Alexander Valley is a very narrow valley. You've got east and west and the sun obviously comes from the, um, rises in the east and sets in the west. So you want to have these east facing slopes because these are cooler. And in Alexander Valley, they tend to be very steep. So it's very hard to get these vineyards. And so a lot of people plant west facing, which is obviously warmer because you get the afternoon heat. So we make the wines differently depending on what, what the exposure is, how old the vines are. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it, but, and the drainage is a big thing, how much water holding capacity we have, etc. So the bottom line is I like to make wines that are single vineyard. So how do I make complex wines from one vineyard? And that is by picking across different soils within that vineyard. The vineyards are relatively small, so each so soil may only be one or two acres, but I'll bring them into the winery and I make them a little bit differently. So if it's a thin soil or more free draining soil, I typically lower the extraction. I don't want to extract it too much because if it's a thin soil, you tend to have small berries. When you have small berries, you've got high skin pulp ratio, so your tannin are much higher relative to the fruit. So I extract them a lot less. I lower the temperature, shorter pump overs, etc. If I have a deeper soil, then I extract more because I know I'm going to be more fruity than they are tannic, so I can ferment a little bit warmer, I can extract them more. But then during maceration, I let the temperature cool down because I want to maintain that tannin. And the way you measure success for me is, you know how wines move from purple to red to brown to orange? Wine, red wines should be you know, purple to red for about 20, 25 years before they start transitioning. And for, you just got to have the history. You've got to have made wine from these vineyards for, you know, for me, I've been making wine from the same vineyards for 30 years. So I know how they're going to react in a good year and a bad year and a hot year, a cool year, a wet year, whatever. And that history is really important. In Oakville, I tend to not do the low extraction. I tend to extract more mm -hmm. because I pick a little bit earlier. The berries tend to be a little bit bigger than they are in hillsides. I'm also on a hillside in Oakville, but it's a north facing slope, so it's much, much cooler. And that's where we make the, the game ranch comes from Oakville. It's this beautiful little north facing hillside, bigger berry than you would be, believe it or not, on the valley floor, which is thinner. So quite a unique site. Um, the Yeoman, which is our top Alexander Valley vineyard, is, is north northeast. It's a terrace, and so I can extract that fairly well too but Catherine which is our biggest selling wine is something that's you know I try to make that really user friendly and that's why it's become a very popular wine but going back to your point about Alexander Valley Ray there's not there's not a lot I mean when I first started I think back in 1990 there was a lot of individual um, Alexander Valley Cabernets today there's not a lot I mean I can name a few wineries around but a lot of other people are buying the fruit here and blending it into to other to other shame. brands. Wow. Yeah, it's a real shame, and I think Alexander may have lost its way a little bit. Um, but we have some great, great wineries that are still here, obviously.
It's www.goldschmidtvignettes.com, G-O-L-D, gold, Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-D-T, vineyards, V-I-N-E-Y-A-R-D-S.com. And you can always follow me on Instagram, which is, I probably put a video up every one or two days, whichever country I'm in, and that's goldschmidt underscore vineyards. And so, yeah, you can follow me there too.